so this is the ballet slipper mold as you may recall I showed you in the lovely uh, rack that Fiona sent to me and she has a video on her channel about the the mold and how she made it which I'll put a link to below some plastic wrap wrapped around it a couple of times now the first time I made this um, I did it I did it quite tight and I wasn't quite happy with how that worked so I'm going to try something a little bit different this time around so bear with me last time I just wrapped the whole thing in the plastic but because it's a smooth surface I found when I started paper mashing it it slipped around quite a lot so and there was nothing to hold on to to stop it from doing that because it's got like a basin here um, so this time what I'm what I'm going to try and do just bear with me is um, gather it up more like this so that it is it is nice and tight around the shoe part itself like that and then kind of twist it here because after all, this is the part that is going to give you your shape this part here inside this little dish part that has nothing to do with it as you can see the finished product is all hollow so this part here just you know it gives you the shape for around here but nothing inside so I thought if I do it like this I can keep that plastic from moving around so much when I'm paper mashing it but it also will give me something to hold on to while I do it and then if I wanted to use that to hang it to dry under my dryer I can just tie something around it as well rather than sitting it on something so I'm hoping this works now I'm not going to record the actual paper mashing of this mainly because I have a video on my paper mache ballet slippers paper mache is the same I'm going to give it two layers of newspaper I'm going to give it a coating of um, cover it with cheesecloth but as I said I'm using a double layer of cheesecloth on this because I want it to have a little bit more texture when it's finished rather than be smooth now if you don't want it to have a rough texture by all means just stick to your paper mache but maybe give it three or four layers of paper mache just so it has that extra strength but I will put a link to my paper mache um, ballet slippers below also so that you can see the process of covering the slipper which is exactly the same and um, then it turns out like this and then I will do some decorating at the end okay so I have the second one done it's all dried um, the way I did the plastic was so much better just twisting it like that holding it to do the paper mache and things like that was a lot easier than trying to hold one where it was smooth inside so yes that did that did work that worked very well actually so now we just need to get our slipper off we need you need pretty sharp scissors to cut it down the back and you don't want to be gouging into it too far um, yeah that's fine just ease it off very gently just sometimes it's best not to paper mache too far up the sides just to the level of the slipper itself is fine and it makes it so much easier to get it off okay actually this is good because you can use all that plastic to help ease it out and that should just slide out like the other oh, hang on I've got it caught down there I think plastic does stick sometimes there we go beautiful clean we still have our ballet shoe mold in perfect condition just a little groove down the back where you can see I've um, slotted the scissors in but that was mainly with the first 
the first slipper the second one of course the groove was just the same so I just need to tidy that one up now um, around the edges as you can see I've just paper mache the back of this one together so that's no big deal and then I'm ready for deck
Okay, so that's how I've decorated the little ba ballet slippers, and that's what I would call my style. Um, the other ones are very pretty, and I made them for other people, so this one I'll be keeping myself. Um, and that's what I've thought, but I actually had a, an idea for the inside, rather than leaving it plain, I did want to put a, a, something in it, um, perhaps not both of them, I don't know, but I had a little thought, and I did it on the other one, um, and that was just to pop a couple of stick pins inside, if you want. I'm going to actually have these displayed in a little uh, glass clutch, so I may not have anything in, but I'll just show you how I did that anyway. And that is, all I got was a little bit of this foam stuff. It doesn't have to be cut to a perfect shape, just as long as you can stuff it in the toe. I got some tulle. I wrapped it. Don't, don't have to put it exactly in the middle. I wrapped it around like that. I stuck it in the toe and scrunched it down just a little bit to give it some softness. If you find it's a bit loose in there, you can glue it of course. Just get a little bit of chill and stuff it in and nothing will move. I mean even that looks pretty to give it a very soft effect. But once you've done that, see, all you have to do then is um, stick a stick pin in or something like that and it just makes it a very pretty or you know but um like I said that's just an idea you could do you don't have to have stick pins in them at all you can just leave them nice and um the fabric showing or you could um just leave them plain oh gosh I think there's a street sweeper out the front I haven't filmed all week and the day I do, they decide to do that. That's funny, isn't it? Okay, uh, you may notice I did not cut the ribbons and that's mainly because this is some, some beautiful antique lace that I've got and I really want to keep the beauty of it. So, it, you know, although I did cut it to use it, um, it's lovely to just see it and that's it'll be in a little display box. And I just, before I go... Um, Okay, I love the way they turned out. Like I said, that is more my style. And I just want to show you oh, wrong way. Okay, so that's those ones made with the mold that Fiona sent me. And of course, I'll put a link to her um, tutorial on that in the description box below. These ones that I'm waiting to send to someone um, are the first paper mache ballet slippers that I made. So we have those there. Uh, I want to make sure I'm going to get all these in. And my toilet paper ballet slippers are for my daughter. Um, my youngest daughter. I did film decorating these but the footage got lost. One of my children used the SD card and a few of the videos that I'd filmed got lost on that particular card. But that's how the toilet roll ballet slippers turned out when I decorated those ones. So as you, although I want to change the ribbon, the ribbons just aren't long enough on those ones. So as you can see, there's not a huge difference at all, is there? You know, they all, once you decorate them, pretty much turn out the same. Um, I think the only thing I would do would be make two identical ones because it would just cut down on the time of having to wait for things to dry. Um, but there we go lovely miniature ballet slippers three different ways to make them paper mache 
toilet paper roll and Fiona's mould. I will put a, a link to all of those um, tutorials in the description box below. And Fiona, please accept my apology for taking so long for getting these done. My house has been, um, I've had daughters to run to specialists. I was without a car. I'm getting a car today, so yay! Postage! <laughs> um, that's, that's what's going on. You know, these things happen, but um, yes, all done. I love how they turned out. Thank you for watching today. Bye-bye.